take over. Hey, Andy, Jamie, what's going on? Hey, Scott. Thank you very much. Hi, Jamie. Uh, you can see my screen, right, Jamie? Absolutely. Yes, you are okay, live. Okay, good. Good. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the trading studio. My name is Andy, and that's Jamie and Scott. And uh, let's just dive straight in. It's been a while. Thank you. Gosh, it's been close to a month. Uh, so <laughs> and we, we have some price alerts. Uh, so it'll be fun looking at some of the price alerts that you guys dropped uh, last time. And we will do it again. So be thinking of a stock that you might want to kind of enter into our little fun little, uh, I guess it's a bi-weekly now, uh, little contest that we play just for just for giggles and yeah, no, no prizes. But uh, anyway, it's always fun. Not only that, you get some good ideas. Well, let's dive in. Before we do, let's go to the uh, disclaimer here. We are a content publisher prior. Uh, all right, let's dive into the Agenda for today, the market recap. Not a whole lot to say there as you keep just going to all time highs, but we will see if we can't, you know, find anything that might stumble us. But uh, boy, just not like I said, not a whole lot to say there. Uh, Jamie will do the Holly recap. There was one big mammoth winner on there today. And I believe it was a short. And then uh, a guy had asked me to build him a kind of an earnings scanner, you know, so he can kind of. Uh, you know, look at different uh, uh, columns you know, and things like that. So I built them. Anytime I do something like that, I always like to share it because uh, it's just a, a good way of maybe uh, sharing some knowledge on when you're building your configuration and things like that of what you can do to, to you know, help you get some better ideas. And you've heard us talking a couple of times in uh, on these webinars about the Market Explorer. We call it me. Uh, Anyway, another one was dropped in there today. This is pretty cool. Uh, I I was the one that requested that, and uh, uh, it's it's basically looking at gap fills on the daily chart. So our market explorer are going to be it's going to be able to find you these gap fills. Uh, I think that's big, especially if you uh, you know you're a swing trader and you're looking for ideas. A lot of times when a stock does fill that gap, could be a great uh, buying opportunity or if it fills a, a, a downside you know, gap, it could be a, a good shorting opportunity in some cases. But anyway, we'll go over that. And then why not? Let's play the price alerts game. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I think it's it's more difficult now since we, we got two weeks between each webinar. Uh, hold on. Let me cut off the stupid phone. Somebody got all text happy over here. Uh, so uh, what was I? Oh, yeah. So but anyway. Give us some ideas, whether it's long or short. Just be thinking of a stock that you might want to put into the uh, uh, our little price alerts, uh, and then we will share that out with everybody. All right. Uh, for some of you people who are new in here, okay, we want to talk a little bit about our five-star support, education, and training. All right. We do have webinars. Uh, we have the Monday and Wednesday one on one week, and then the Tuesday and Thursday one on another week. Uh, and then uh, every day we have the support webinar that you see down at the bottom, okay? And I'll pull up a slide here in just a minute, tell you more about that. Uh, great place to come to get, you know, education. If you have questions about the software, be sure you come to these support webinars. And also, it's not listed on here. Chris has been doing one, going in there every day at around 3.30 Eastern time. And he will stay in there for about an hour. Uh, so it's been a huge help for people that comes looking on our uh, online chat. Uh, we send them over there and he can answer all your questions. So uh, all great places uh, to get great resources to get education and training, not to mention all of our just uh, videos that we have on our YouTube channel and our TI University uh, segments that are on there. Also great as well. All right. Uh, there's the daily support session I was m uh, mentioning. At, once again, that's every day at 12 Eastern time. Uh, you can see the address down below, trade-ideas.com forward slash live. Uh, if you're in Barry's room uh, through the live um, stream, you can just stay in there and we'll take over it and uh, invite you to ask uh, any questions that you have about the software. Or, you know, if it gets kind of slow, we always talk about stocks too. All right, I'm gonna save this for Scott on the way out. And let's pull up, 
got a Vonage alert just went off. All right, let's because we just keep going higher. Which is fine, you know, really uh, is about it. And now we've had what, average. It hasn't been sloped like this in a while. I guess you go back over here and we had that slope. Well, that was back in April and now we have it again. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but friends will tell you, Jamie, this, yeah, but as soon as uh, it's, I'm just living to talk about it as far as again, all time highs again. Yeah. Could be tomorrow, could be two weeks. Holly, you can go ahead and steal it from me. Okay, you should have eyes on. I do. All right. So, having said that, conservative exits, which we have the conservative column here, and moderate, right? Do we see any? But based on the share, that's why when you see off, before we get into these, let's see, right here, entry price 82.76 that Holly brings to the table. Much what this thing did for the rest of the day. Just a nice, still made a little bit of money on it. Go ahead and take my profit, but not, okay. Came close to that stop area before it got like I thought it would be. Uh, a little bit of spread between conservative. Vimeo was also at all time lows. So sometimes when there's no obvious support here, they just tomorrow. A lot of stop outs uh, as a percentage of the trades taken today. And typically there might be a couple of good trade arounds, but as we can see from the aggressive uh, profit column here, all right, lose 100. Does that number get any better over time? Nope, got worse uh, on VYNT. And this is a good time to illustrate what might be a good trade around as these things are unfolding or reaching their stop loss areas, or even something that gets hit on a reduced risk or a profit save, if it eventually makes it down to that stop area, is it a good trade around? Well, obviously, looking at MQ here, look what happened once we hit the stop area. Did the stop area act as a pivot point? Did it dance around it and bounce up? Nope, trade right below it. Never really saw that level again. Same thing with USO, all right? Once we got through that stop area, boom, off to the races. Same thing on VYNT. Stop area was penetrated stayed below it acted as resistance for the remainder of the day but not quite the case on fro all right fro was actually a reduced risk pretty early on you know just a hair away from that stop area but once you see that uh that ai exit you pull this thing up and you're like hey it's kind of dancing around that stop loss area here now notice how it wicked right down to it in this 30 minute period here and then took a nice little lift up now, that's not a whole lot of room right there, 888, you bounce the dime. Um, but the lesson here is learning what to look for, right? How did it act around the stop area? This one didn't deliver much or the, uh, the way that the thing behaved around the stop loss area that's important here. So even though it was only a dime, that would have been a good, decent trade around. Of course, some are gonna move a lot more than others. On the same token, Tex acted real well around its stop area too. Took it a while to get there. Once again, it was not a stop out. It was very close. If it wouldn't have closed it here, it would have stopped out and look how it reacted around the stop area. Nice little wick through it. Could have made an entry here. Once again, a little bit better than the prior one. Fro only moved a dime. This one moved up maybe, you know, 20, 30 cents. But a lot of the times you'll get bigger moves in this. And sometimes if they even make it back up to the original entry price, they'll get another little burst or a leg up. So just keep that in mind as you move forward, as you interact with the AI, um, watch those stop levels, maybe set some price alerts as you see something approaching that stop level, watch how it reacts. And a lot of the times these can be good, uh, these can become decent trade arounds as we like to call them. And Andy, that's about it. Any other things uh, from the Holly Blotter that you'd like to? You covered it really very well, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, no problem. Here comes the baton. Back to you. All righty. All right. So, like I was mentioning, uh, a guy hit me up. That was in chat, and uh, he was wanted to work on a, a, a just an earnings uh, top list. You know, just so he can kind of uh, 
trades just because they're running up and volumes coming in and they had earnings. Okay. I want to be able to, I want to see on the chart, what they're doing on the chart. And I'm not talking about the intraday chart. I'm talking about the daily chart. So, you know, the things he wanted to see, he, he kind of wanted to see uh, stocks. He wanted to see change in two minutes. And, and I understand that that's kind of a good column to have. You can always click on that sort by uh, change in two minutes and you can see which of the earnings are moving up the fastest in the last two minutes. Sometimes that can definitely help you catch something uh, that may be uh, on the move, some volume coming in uh, and uh, it is on the move. And you also wanted to see the five minutes, same principle there, you know, the, the biggest percentage, you can sort by that. Uh, and of course he liked uh, relative volume, which uh, typically after earnings, they're gonna have some decent uh, volume coming in, but some are gonna have a lot more than others. Uh, like this in P, let me get this off, TN, you know, huge uh, earnings today. Boy, had a nice little pop there, but then it just kind of went sideways for the rest of the day. Let me take it off my uh, after hours. I was watching some stocks I was in earlier. All right, so what I did is I, I said to myself, okay, if a lot of times, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like to sit here and track a whole bunch of stocks, okay? If I were going to do that, I'm gonna show you. What I like to do is I catch most of my stuff out on earnings after this uh, through my Extreme Volume High Low Pro. They'll start flying through here and I have an earnings state over here so I can really look over there to see if they had earnings. But a lot of people just like to see it in top list form, and I, I definitely understand that. You can uh, you can uh, kind of peruse through a lot of uh, symbols uh, with the, all the columns that we have, and can you know uh, ascertain quite a bit of what a stock is doing uh, just by using our columns. So let me show you the configuration of what I put together, and I think uh, this would this is going to help you guys to kind of uh, filter out some of the some of the noise. Uh, so let me just make span this so we can see everything. Get my little epic pen going here. And you know, first of all, if they, if they had earnings uh, and if they're doing something and there's, there's some really buying going on, they're going to be up a certain percentage. Okay, I don't want to see things that are just flopping around around even, not doing anything. So I got a minimum of at least up three percent now you could actually take this higher, you know, uh, if you really want to find what's moving, I mean, you may take this up to five, 10%, you know, it's, you're definitely going to, you might miss something. A, a stock may open up around three and, and, and it may run to 10 and you miss that whole move. Cause you got, you know, you got up 10%. So a uh, three is probably a good number. Uh, it's a good number for me. Uh, Oh yeah, he wanted to see option volume too. So I added a, uh, he wanted optional, optionable stocks. Okay, so the way I did that, you, since we don't have a filter that will tell you exactly if a stock's optional or not, I'll just go ahead and create, put in an option volume filter and just put a minimum of one contract. So if there's one contract traded, you know the stock, they have options on it. Uh, so that's all that was there for. Uh, EPS is just going to factor out the stocks, ETFs, and things like that. Of course, this is the earnings state. I'm only so, want to see stocks that traded uh, had earnings after hours last night or this morning. Okay, I don't care what's coming this afternoon. I don't care what happened yesterday morning. Uh, just uh, I want the first trading after earnings. Uh, and then this is the this is kind of a, a nice little filter in here. Okay, position in three months the three month range, I put 100 a minimum. Okay, basically that's staying, it has to be on a three month high. Excuse me, get some water here. Okay, so it has to at least be on a three month high. And you say, well, why do you want that? You know, I may miss a lot of the action, that's true. But I, I can tell you this, you're not gonna be caught up in a lot of stocks that are just shooting up and they're in a, in a no man's land, I call them, they're right in the middle of their one month range or two month range. You wanna find things that are, you know, breaking out. And when we look through some of these, we look through some of these fil uh, symbols here in a little bit, it's, you're, going to, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. So volume today has to at least trade 200,000 shares. And I have a minimum price of five. Some people like to try, you know, trade lower price. Uh, this is subjective. You can put whatever you want in here, and I will share this with you. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the stocks that came through here today. 
All right. We looked at this Neptune, Nicola, Nicola whatever you want to call it, uh, was a beauty. Okay, look at that 15-minute range break out there. Uh, right at the open, drove down, turned around, and just took it right out. Okay, and even though the chart on a longer term time frame does not look all that great, at least it's breaking out of this three month high here. Okay, does it take much? Uh, some people they only want to trade 52 week highs, all time highs. I get it, but. I like catching things, you know, I, I don't want to miss something like this because I don't want to catch something that's not on a 52 week high. I'm fine with that. Okay, let's look at some more here. And then I, that's a beauty right there. Look at that. Just uh, uh, even though, look over here, position in lifetime range, it hasn't done anything, but that's okay. It's still breaking out to a yearly high and look at that beautiful breakout that it had right there above. Uh, the month high was a breakout to a four month high. It was a gap, kind of sloppy, but uh, you know, not bad. Still, you know, a buck 40, 50, whatever out of that one. Uh, this one just probably gapped up a little bit too high. Gosh, it closed to up 21%. So, a lot of times you, people get excited, bid this up in pre market, and when they get up sometimes that high, guys. You know, if this thing would have opened up right here, could have been a beauty, but uh, boy, you got to watch those gaps sometimes. I can't do this in my head, but probably around 35% or something like that on the gap up this morning. Yell was another beauty this morning. I mean, it took off, and even though, uh, ooh, is that right? Position in lifetime, they must have had some. Well, something, something doesn't seem right about that. $11 for Yellow Corporation is an all-time high. Maybe, I don't know, I have to look at that. But still, uh, nice gap up, and that was, a, that was a decent one. Coming through the Extreme Volume High Low Pro pretty much all day. Now, this one, see, this is one of those cases where you would have missed it, okay? But I'm okay with that because you would not have gotten this until it took out this level right here, okay? There's your three month high. Well, it looks like it did it. It did it right in the first 15 minutes. So I would have been okay with that. All right. Because I don't like jumping into things, you know, really fast anyway. So boy, that had a huge portion of its move done in the first candle there. So that would have, that would have been tough. So another one, nice little breakout right there, you know, on a gap below and then ran through uh, another, you know, two bucks after that. Just a, just a beauty right there, gap and go. Now, even though they had this level over here, it was through the three month range right at the open. So you, that would have seen pizza was just another gorgeous chart right there, breaking through and uh, nasty pullback though. I mean, ugh, that would have been tough, but boy, if you, uh, if you got that and sat in it all day and it's even trading up higher in after hours. Etsy, uh, I can't believe Etsy's a two, $271 stock now. Things have really gotten crazy. All right, so we could go through these, but uh, you know, an easy way to do that is position and range. This is something you can use during the day. So if you only wanted to see stocks that were near highs, you could just click on this position and range and have it sorted by that all day. And that way you're only gonna see stocks that are near their high. Okay, we know they're doing huge volume. They had earnings. Uh, that would be a way, a good way to toggle during live market action. Another one, like I mentioned, what he wanted to do was look at the two minute. Uh, maybe after first 30 minutes of the trading day, okay? I always love to see stocks after earnings, after 30 minutes of trading, when they come through my uh, extreme volume high low pro, that just tells me that, hey, this stock is hitting a high and it's still doing, a, doing it on insane volume, okay? Those, those are always good candidates for me for a swing. Uh, just because, you know, it just, it just tells you how, there's more than just day traders in it when you see that. And there's some serious institutional buying going in those things. And obviously not all, nothing is, uh, is gonna work perfectly every time, but you can definitely catch some, some winners coming through here at nine o'clock. Uh, but what I was going to say, you could also do a sort by change in two minutes, uh, say like at nine o'clock in the morning, and then you can see the ones that are moving 
after nine o'clock. So the ones that are starting to ramp up and have the biggest percentage move in two minutes, always a good way to look at it. You could do the same thing for the five minute. Uh, change from the close is a little bit, uh, uh, as far as catching opportunity for me, I know a lot of people will just put it on change for the close and leave it, but it doesn't tell the whole picture. You know, they, they could have gapped up 38%, you know, so uh, you might even want to add a change from the open as far as, especially if you're an, an avid, uh, you know, day trader, you know, change for the open is probably going to tell you a lot more than change from the close. So you might want to add that column. Uh, but relative volume is a good one. Uh, anytime there's relative volume coming in, uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, but they're not always going to work. Because look at this thing, you know, relative volume was uh, over 10 and it just gapped, made a quick move. And, and uh, so it doesn't tell the whole story is what's going on, what's happening during that first uh, 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Where is that money flowing? So anyway, this can be a nice little, and also has option percentage. You can see where the option, some people might want to, you know, toggle by that just to see where the options are coming in today. Uh, but uh, let me let me share this with you guys so I can move along to our market explorer real quick. So I will sort it. I'm going to leave it sorted by, I'm going to leave it sorted by change from the close. But you remember, you guys can toggle and uh, and do whatever you want to with these columns they're really great to work with uh during midday to see you know stocks that are moving all right so save and share and let me copy it all and i'm gonna drop it into the chat window guys on your go-to webinar interface so just open up that window and you will see it it's gonna call it biggest gainers and there you go all right, so let's fire up the Market Explorer. And if you're on the latest, uh, I don't know if it's a uh, beta version for you guys. I think I think you, but you you do have access to this. You just have to be on one of the newer versions. Uh, and it's go to new, and you can launch our Market Explorer. Okay, find the E, and it's going to pull up a little window like this. And you probably want to expand it so you can get more data in it. And I know that I know Steve showed you one the other day. I think Jamie showed you one last week. Uh, we're adding these in, and this one I'm going to show you today, the gap, the gap fill. It just got added this morning. Okay. Now this is a work in progress. We're all kind of working with Michael, telling him, you know, things we need to do to tweak it. I noticed that the uh, the bull the bull flags aren't quite like I they should be. Uh, so we'll we'll fine tune this over the coming months and guys and get this really really sweet, but if you're a swing trader or just looking for opportunity, uh, I think you're going to really like this gap fill. All right, so uh, let's go to server window and we're going to do a gap fill, a gap up fill. So it gapped up and now it's filling. And we'll take a look at some of these. Now I found some charts in here that I didn't like. I did, I've already told Michael about it, but what it'll do from what I gathered so far, Michael Michael has used a few data points. One of them is kind of a resistance level that it broke through, and it's coming back to that resistance level. So if I draw a line right here on CRT right here, okay, you're starting to get notified that, hey, this one is doing a gap fill. Now, this will, and it should, if it continues down to do a complete fill of the gap, it will remain on here. But the whole idea is to give you ideas so you can like use your price alerts, maybe mark them up. Heck, some people may just, may just go ahead and bid just to get it on their blotter once it does do that gap fill. Uh, you know, this one I'm not real crazy about. This one, obviously you had a news driven and now it's coming all the way back. I'm not sure anything will happen at this gap fill, but still like to know it. DWAC. Yeah, this is one I'm not sure why why it's in here. I think because we're close enough to this uh, area, but I don't know if we want, I'll talk to Michael about this. I don't know if I want to see them once they've come down here and filled the gap the first time and then failed and coming back down to it again. I guess, I guess that's okay, but uh, uh, we'll have to talk about that with Michael. There's a good one right there to a T. There's your gap fill. Okay, now 
like I said, some of these charts that have been kind of in a death march and just have this one move and they're kind of done. That's not really the kind of stuff I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be excited when I see like big cap stuff in here. When I see stocks like Apple and Facebook and, uh, uh, you know, uh, stocks that you can really invest in or, you know, take a swing trade in, uh, when they do gap fills, because that happens all the time and those can be really great entries. But I'm really, I'm really digging what I'm seeing so far. There's your gap and it is feeling, so it is working. Uh, there are just a couple in here that, okay, we've already seen that one. See, they're getting, getting a few repeats. I'm not sure why. Uh, there's one, there's your gap fill, but it's been on, kind of on a death march. Our cat, I remember that was hot for a while, still, Close enough, I guess, to the gap fill, it starts letting you know. Obviously, guys, with the market at all time highs and what we're seeing right now, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of good prospects in here. But boy, I tell you, when the market starts, you know, getting a little, a little bit of correction, maybe pulling back, you may see this thing fill up with some really good opportunities. So keep an eye on this. You have access to it. You just got to pull it up, uh, have it running somewhere, maybe. Uh, in your taskbar and just pull it up every now and then and see if you see, you know, some uh, some possible opportunity there and just use your price alerts. Mark it up with a price alert when you see it because I've uh, I've caught some really good ones uh, swing trading on these gap fields a lot of times. Ah, the repeats are different days. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse says the repeats are different days. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Okay, I did not even notice the dates. I just figured the dates were all today, but uh, you are correct. All right, all right, guys. So let's see. Let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the price alerts. Now remember, these were set almost a month ago, so I'm not obviously not gonna. Uh, where they are? There they are. All right. Now, Slava, I don't know if you're in here today. But I may have made a mistake because Jamie, I want you to look at this NET. The price alert was right here, but yeah. I have it marked as a short. <laughs> and look at this thing. It just went through that level and ripped from one, basically 137. And look at it right now. It's even trading up in after hours on earnings. Uh, that would have been a great long. <laughs> and, I don't and know. Impressive. Is, is Slava here today? I don't know because don't know. it looks like he might know. have been trying to play either. The, yeah, was he playing the breakout <laughs> or the resistance? No, he, no. <laughs> he just told me you got it right. Don't worry, Slava. I, I do that all the time. Uh, but uh, wow. Hey, you know, it's one of those ones that you got short and then when you were wrong, you just flip out of it real quick and you made a killing. That's why I'm sure the way you traded it too, Slava. All right. So there were a few shorts, and obviously a lot of these uh, didn't work very well. I think the big winner here is Baba, okay, Ignacio, uh, with a Baba call right here. It had some really nice profits on it. It's pulled back since. Um, so anyway, you know, this is not fair, guys, because, you know, if I look through these, I'm sure a lot of these were probably, like I know this BAC, you know, was at all-time highs recently. So that was a good one from uh, Renee. Uh, very nice one there. There's the call on that day right there as it broke out through this level and a uh, nice little follow through. So good call there from Renee. Uh, there were, like I said, a few shorts that didn't work. But now that we're back on track and we'll be doing these every two weeks, we'll just keep that in the back of your mind when you're looking at these charts, guys. <coughs> I know it's a, a crazy market and we're at all time highs, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it again this week. Uh, and like I said, I'm not seeing as many participants since we're not doing it on a weekly basis, but uh, we'll see how it goes this week if we'll continue or not. But let me go ahead and uh, remove these. And let's fire it up and get started again. So once again, guys, trouble finding a channel for real-time buys for swing traders. What do you recommend? Well, we have, we have a, uh, Good question, Mark. We have a channel called Swing Trading. That's There's some good alerts in that. Okay, one of those that you're going to see in there are, is this pullback above 50 SMA long swing. So it's going to be called just pullback uh, and reversing or something like that. It doesn't. It's it's the top one on that swing channel. And let me just go ahead and pull it up and show you real quick. Meanwhile, you guys, if you want to, you can start dropping your stock ideas in there. Once again, give me a stock and a price alert. 
And if you don't tell me it's a short, I'm gonna assume it's a long. So Mark, let me show you where you can go. Uh, swing ideas. And this top one is going to be a, a, a good one. Let's take a look at today. Now this one hasn't been performing, it's really weird, it hasn't been performing as well as it has in the past. And I think it's because of this crazy rotation that uh, that we're getting. But you can find some uh, some good ones, some good ones in here. Uh, squeeze break is uh, another one where you can catch some uh, catch some nice ones in. Uh, I've always been kind of a, a discretionary uh, trader. Okay, so I, you know, when I've been doing the same thing for years, I like looking through a lot of my. Uh, 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 windows, you know, for ideas. And then, you know, as you get, as the more and more you swing trade, you get stocks that you get familiar with. Like my, my one is Neo, you know, and uh, I, that was my best trader last year. And I took a position right here because I was anticipating this little breakout, especially with Tesla doing as well as it's doing. And uh, yeah, I've traded it through that move and now I'm in it now and hopefully I'll get some continuation there. But uh uh, this revenue growth fishing can be a good one. I catch a lot of good ones in here. Stocks, these are stocks that have been uh, beaten up and you can, you do have access to this. I'll just go ahead and share it with you. This is stocks that have been kind of beaten up on the uh, three month time frame, but they're showing signs of turning around and they have strong revenue growth. And this can be a really good one. I'll share it with and drop it into the uh, channel here. Call it Rev, Rev Fishing. Now, the thing about this one is uh, a lot of these are going to fail. Okay, sometimes you get a lot of head fakes before these things will run, you know, kind of like on this day right here. You get these nasty pullbacks. A lot of times I'll wait and I'll buy these things on pullbacks. Uh, and once again, like a lot of windows, when market has gone up as much as it has, I'm always kind of, you know, this is where I'm selling stocks and, and uh, yeah, I'm not looking for a lot of opportunity right now, but uh, uh, you, you get a nice three or four day pullback on the market and this thing starts filling up, it, it can be really sweet. Because what that's what does that tell you? These have to be close to their ten month high, um, ten day high. So when you see the market pulling back and this thing filling up with stocks, it's what we call uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, Jamie? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh gosh, I can't even think. I'm drawing I'm drawing a a blank. Like look at this heps right here. You know, just been just getting killed. Now I like when they base for about six weeks. That seems to be my sweet spot. So this one, you know, could probably be a head fake and probably come back down. Uh, I don't like to just flat out. There you go. This is one that's been bottoming. Like I said, for almost for like six weeks now, trying to come out of this. Maybe I'll throw me a, me a little uh, alert in here if it goes off tomorrow. Maybe I'll take a look at it, see if there's any volume coming in. Just can catch some really good good trades in that one. Relative strength, that's what I was looking for. I cannot believe I could not think of that. There you go. All right. You know what, guys? I think we're going to pass this week. We've only got one uh, one in there. And like I said, it's it's okay. It's um uh no, we got two now. We need if I get if I get at least five, I'll do it. <laughs> but uh okay. actually three. Jesse okay. if Jesse was uh using open, we need a price. Open what? See, Jesse oh. says open long. I was assuming that was for the contest, but if it is, we need a price. Yeah, yeah, we need a price for a price alert. Okay, I'll go ahead. There's a few coming in, so I'll go ahead and and uh, start. To, let's fire it up here. Okay, we do have LSPD. Oh, long from seventy two. There you go. He's uh, he's looking for a bounce here.
and that is uh, Neo. Uh, A, B, Airbnb. Didn't they have earnings today? Let's see. Okay. Oh, they had market after hours. Okay, but it's not. So what's his what's his price there? One seventy nine. EMA. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Since it's trading a little bit lower. Mera. And that is at 59. That's Walt. Looking for a pullback. I dig. That's, ooh, he's looking for a big pullback. That's all right. I can see that. Easy. That's 59 even, right? And that's Walt. And who else we got? Uh, wait, Neo, didn't you already? Do we have two Neos? Yeah, you already got you know, only one Neo. You have that LPSD, whatever it is, LSPD. Uh, yeah, the contest, Richard. It's it's just for, like I said, for your for uh, giggles. And we just uh, we just like to everybody give the price alert. I will share it with everybody, and you can kind of track to see how you do against the competition. So yeah, no prizes or anything like that. Just uh, okay. Open twenty three ninety five. Yep. Oh boy, he's, he wants it tight there. Ninety five, and that's Jesse. Oh, okay, he's messing with me. All right, so we got a we got a few in here. Hopefully, let's get a couple more. Uh, once again, if you're new in here, just feel free. Uh, I did miss PayPal from Ignacio, and that is at two thirty eight long. All righty, let's just go ahead and mark it right here. Been kind of beaten up. He's looking for a bounce eventually. I can kind of see that. Yeah, we got enough to play. Let's see. Okay, Jason with Powie at 10. Uh oh, it's okay. We'll let that slide. Oh, I went 110, I'm sorry. Oh, look, he's looking for a major breakout there. You know what? He has two weeks, so it could happen. I like to be I like to be notified of that when it goes off. Donkey Kong. At Jesse, you're giving you already got one, Jesse. Wait, was you want to go with open or uh, just one, Jesse. Uh, no, no problem. Okay, we'll stick with that one. All right, guys. Well, we got a, we got enough here. We got. Uh, oh wait, Powie, I didn't put a name in. Let's see, edit price alert. And that was Powie was Jason. There we go. All right, let me share these. I wanted at least five, and we got six. And I'll drop them into the chat window. All right, guys, thank you so much for your participation, and we will uh, – yeah, thank you, Mike C. Appreciate it. Ah, earnings on Donkey Kong, man. Yeah, they've been selling – they've been getting hit because of PIN, I, know, I noticed. All right, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm going to bring Scott in here, and he'll walk us out. You guys hang on. He'll have a uh, promo code for those who are interested. Yeah, thanks. Uh, everyone should make sure that they get the Strategy Indicators ebook. 
uh, released recently. It's authored by our director of software development, Dave Mabe, and it's got some great ideas for you. Just go ahead to tradeideas.com slash strategy and put in an email address to get a free download. Uh, we've also got uh, Strength Alerts uh, newsletter, which is a product that's uh, great for you if you're not quite ready to start up a regular Trade Idea subscription. Uh, subscribers can also find these same Strength Alerts in the channel bar if you're a regular subscriber. But if you want to uh, try out some Trade Ideas ideas without becoming a full subscription member, just go to trade-ideas.com slash strength. And if you like the trade of the week, you'll love these. It's uh, got five trades every Sunday night delivered to your email inbox, $17 a month. Uh, there's also a code, Holly Rocks, that'll save you 50% off any of your new subscriptions or upgrade from standard to premium. Go ahead and take advantage of that before we change that code out. And if you have any questions, email us info at tradeideas.com. You can also find us on Twitter at Trade Ideas, at QuantBot, at TISDG, uh, Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle. And uh, thanks, everyone. The recording of this session will be up later on tonight or tomorrow. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Jamie. Have a nice day. Yes, thank you, Scott. Thanks, everybody. I'll see some of you tomorrow.